thank you guys for being here this morning. And um, I just want to jump right into it, and then we'll have some lunch. And uh, pretty good afternoon. How's that sound? So um, I, this is a, a callback to a message I preached a couple of years ago uh, before COVID. So some of you are like, Pastor Tim, we've already heard this. Like, why are you doing it again? Because I'm familiar with it, and it'll just make it a whole lot easier by the time I'm done, instead of trying to fight through all the emotions that are going to come later. So we'll save the thank yous and the special things for later, um, but we'll jump into our, our text this morning in just a minute. Um, one of my favorite quotes is that people need to be reminded uh, more often than they need to be instructed. And uh, I think realistically, if, if we're all striving for discipleship and we're striving to be healthy in our spiritual life, then this is not a shock. We, we, we know the foundational truths of Scripture. We understand what Christ has done. We understand the role it plays in our lives. So sometimes it's just really great to have a simple reminder of, of, of things that we already know, things that we already understand. And it's especially important when it comes to growth uh, in the very near future because sometimes uh, we need to be reminded of these things when change happens. And there's change that's happening starting at the end of this week, and there's change that's happening starting next Sunday, and there's change that's going to be happening in the very near future as uh, the, the church here is looking to grow and stretch and get deeper into Middletown. And, and one of the essential elements to change is, is understanding kind of the why behind the what. And this is something I've said, and it's something you've probably heard other pastors say, but understanding the why behind the what, understanding the vision, understanding the mission, understanding the role that we play in it, understanding how uh, as individuals it impacts the body, the body impacts the community, the community is really what we're trying to impact. So understanding the why behind the what is really a challenge to be teachable, and a challenge to be open, and a challenge to learn, and a challenge to grow. So today, uh, this is really just kind of a look inward as individuals, but to understand that all of us as individuals, we are the ones that make up the body. And if we want to see this body impact not only this community, but the kingdom, the, the capital K kingdom as a whole by and large, it's important for us to understand on that individual level. So I'm going to invite you to jump in and pray real quick as we get started, and, and we'll, we'll keep moving through this morning's uh, sermon. Father, we're grateful again to be here, and thank you for those who have joined us this morning as we celebrate and uh, work through uh, saying see you later and goodbyes. Father, all the glory today is for you. Uh, where harmony is, how you brought us here, what you've done through us here, it's all because of you. So as we, we get into your word this morning, as we have a time of fellowship, God, I just pray that uh, we would we just turn it all over to you. So Father, open our ears, calm our hearts, calm our minds, soften our emotions just for a little bit, just so we can uh, just take this time to, to reflect and to think, how can we grow as a, a body? How can we live with the, the big kingdom in mind? And how do we play that part here as individuals and church members or attendees or visitors, wherever we may fall? How do we take that next step in our faith? So, Father, we ask these things in your name. Amen. So it's really important for us to understand because important in, in order for something to become the fabric of what we are or the fabric of who we are, it really has to get into the fabric of our personal lives. So on an individual level, we can look at the, the big picture and we can start to shrink it down and go, what is my part in this? What is my role in this? How am I supporting harmony? How am I supporting vision? How am I supporting leaders? So the impact here is in both a personal life, it's in our, our professional lives, it's in our spiritual lives. So all of that is covered in this and that's why life gets messy. It gets messy because the church is made up of individuals. And my dad used to make a joke. He'd say, ministry would be awesome if it weren't for people. But without people, ministry wouldn't be. So we have to really kind of hit the, the pause button at times and start to, to think about what's the impact 
for me as an individual and what's the impact for the church body. So when you hear the words inward or you're thinking inward or in the future, if upward, inward, outward makes a, a stronger push, understand that when we're talking about the inward factors, we're talking about you as an individual, you as leaders, you as volunteers, you as uh, servants, but it's also the inward part of the church body as an entire unit. There's a wholeness to this. So I want to share a verse, a couple of verses. We're going to be in Colossians 2 and Colossians 3. But Colossians 2, this is what Paul writes. Paul says, and now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. This is the very first part of this whole idea of looking inward before we can look outward. And it's making sure that that relationship, is, it is, not only is it existing, but it's a part of who and what we are. So when Paul says, let it grow down, let your, let your life, let it, the roots grow down, be strengthened in who Christ is and what Christ has done. And the impact of that is it's vibrantly seen in our faith. So staying rooted is foundational in our growth and developing our faith, but it's also essential in developing as a body. So when we talk about developing and, and being rooted in Christ, really we're just talking about, hey, here's spiritual disciplines. How important is meditating and reading Scripture? How important is our prayer life? How important is it to serve? How important is it to give? How important is it to, to, to help and to encourage and to be here and to worship? How important is it for our lives to reflect worship? These are all a part of the individual process, but they're the building blocks that are necessary to reach that bigger goal. Each of you, myself, everyone in this room outside of it, all of us have a special gifting and a talent, some that are natural and some that are God-given. And sometimes it's just an extension of what we can naturally do that God uses to grow or to change something in our lives. But understanding everybody in this room has something to offer. There's, there's nobody that comes in here that can just sit and go, I have nothing to offer these people. I'm telling you, you have something to offer. Romans 12, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, they, they give these laundry lists of spiritual gifts from serving to teaching to preaching to encouraging, building each other up, gifts of generosity, gifts of wisdom, discernment, all, all healings, miracles. Some things we get a little like kind of, whoa, tongues, that's a gift. Has it been administered in this body? I don't know. Wouldn't it be awesome? But it's understanding you have value, you have purpose, God has created you with intention, and He's placed you here for something. And I want to encourage you to think about this as you're thinking about change and as you're thinking about what's coming next in business meetings and ministry hubs, what's the role that you play in that? What gifting do you have that could help in that? How do we continue to grow not just this body here, but to impact our community? Because the church, the reality is the church is not just an organization. It's not these four walls. It's a living, breathing body. It requires life. It requires health. It, inquire, it requires involvement for everyone. If everybody's going to be involved in the future of this church or the, the church as a whole, it really depends on the health of its individuals. So what that means is for the church to be healthy, for the church to be a healthy unit, it needs to be made up of healthy individuals or as healthy as possible, which means I'm always striving for health. And we understand that in the physical sense. I think I made the most profound statement to my wife a couple of years back when we were talking about like getting in shape and, and losing weight. And I was like, it wouldn't kill us to eat a little healthier. Right? I mean, we understand that on a small level, so we know like little steps lead to bigger changes, bigger changes lead to like lifestyle change, but they lead to body life change. So it's understanding, am I pushing towards health? Am I, am I striving not just for my physical health and my emotional mental health, but like the wholeness of health, my spiritual health, 
my family health, my, 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 my career health. When I'm here with the body, that health. So here's what Paul writes in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. And we're going to break them down in, in little chunks. So it says this, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. On Wednesdays, we've been doing a Don't Forget series, and this is one of the precepts that we we're building into our students. This understanding where all of these things are listed, tenderhearted, mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, all of this is based in the forgiveness that we receive from Christ. All of these things are, are, are given to us. And Paul says, clothe yourselves with it. Put these on. Be intentional about it. It's been cold these last couple of days. And everybody has probably put on blankets and extra socks and an extra hoodie and a jacket just to sit in the living room and watch TV. And so Paul is saying, these are the things that you have to be intentional about putting on. If you want body health, put on love, put on mercy, put on patience. And he says, but here's a really, really important one. And I think this is one of the most important elements when we're trying to get a gauge of where we're at in our spiritual lives, and that's forgiveness. It's understanding, hey, God has forgiven me of so much. And we talk about where, where Paul says all that we've done has been nailed to the cross. Every sin, every debt that we've owed, anything that we've ever done wrong, past, present, future, is nailed to the cross, covered in Christ's death. And that empowers us to do what? To forgive others? To lead in mercy? To put on compassion? Why is that important in the body life? Well, I don't know that we really need an explanation for that. Because how many of you would rather be involved with people that are clothed in this as opposed to being clothed in the opposites. Paul continues, he says, Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let that peace, that shalom peace that comes from Christ, rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. And it's important for us to understand that this word peace isn't just like the absence of conflict, but sometimes that's what we're willing to settle for. We're willing to say peace only means I'm not fighting with anybody, I'm comfortable, everything's okay, nothing's caving in. But what, what Paul is talking about here, and when we're talking about the peace that, that God brings into their, our lives, and the peace that we're supposed to be striving for, it's that shalom, perfect peace of everything being in balance and everything being in order. And in our personal lives, sometimes it's our physical health and our emotional and mental health and our spiritual health all being aligned and working in totality. So what? So we are experiencing a wholeness. We put together new welcome packets and new graphics, and on one of them, it says, Harmony, uh, live out your faith. And it talks about how life is better together. And one of the things that it's important for us to experience is healing. Healing. Like, that's kind of where it starts. Like, heal, grow, worship, serve, give. Like, that's not necessarily our, 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 our building blocks. But those are important elements for us to understand. There's healing through all of this. Our body needs healing. Our physical body. We understand when something's out of whack. We were talking at dinner, I think, last night, sharing different things. I got up, and my arm fell off, and I bumped my toe, and then, like, my back went out. Like, it just, it happens, and we, we feel when the body's disjointed or when something's broken, but do we feel that in our, our, our body life, where, where Paul says we're members of one body? Do we feel when the other person is hurting? Do we feel when the people around us are struggling? Do we feel when they're wrestling with doubt and fear and depression? Are, are we able to put that on? Can we, can we be empathetic? Can we express sympathy? Or is it just like, hey, it's just I'm worried about this. This is my tabernacle. Well, it is. It's God's tabernacle. But we're a body. And Paul says, put on love. Let... Christ rule in your heart. Live in peace. Strive for peace. And then he continues and says, let the message about Christ in all its rich richness fill your lives. 
Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. So Paul says, guess how all of this is driven? All of this is driven through the power of the gospel. The message of Christ in all its richness. Through that, that's where we're empowered to live. That's where we're empowered to heal. That's where we're empowered to grow. That's where we're able to experience life change and we're able to experience freedom. It's the power of the gospel. It's not something I've done. Paul says it's the message of Christ. Let that be the driving factor behind everything that you do here inside these walls and outside these walls. That's the impact. And then there's some body life in there. Teaching counsel, kind of like the idea of building up, edifying. We talked about this with Ignite. There's the, the, the term that's connected to it to, to build up and to construct something, to establish something. There's, there's different levels. We think about building supplies and we think about construction supplies. I'm building something, it's kind of generic, but when I'm constructing something, I'm more intentional about what I'm putting in my cart. If I'm trying to establish something, I need to make sure I have the right supplies. I need to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Why? Because we're going from like the general to the more specific. So in your relationships here, can they move from the general to the more specific? Can they get more intimate with each other? Can they get more intimate with God? Because I think part of the reality that we have to face is we're sometimes too comfortable with having a general relationship with Christ. We're comfortable here. I don't need to go any further. I don't need to be challenged. I don't need to live in peace. I can just be like the hermit crab that curls up in his shell and he's just hanging out doing his thing. That's not freedom. It's not living. And it's not healthy. Healthy individuals are able to do these things with the right focus, the right actions, and the right motives. Everything that Paul talks about here is a tie-in to both our character, to ethics, to integrity. So body health is important for our ethics and integrity and our character, both as individuals and, let's face it, both as a body. Why? Because the church is made up of you. But pastor, you already said that. Individual health, body health. Yeah, and that's the repeated thing. Like, anchor on to that. You're the church. That's like an old song we sang in like Five Day Club. I am the church. You are the church. Nobody remembers. We are the church together, right? Every living something all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. Like, that's, like, we, we, we can understand that, but it's really just, where's that stay? It just kind of stays here. It's not really something we embrace. But what Paul is saying is if we want to grow and if we want to have an impact, And if we want to continue to push the capital K, big kingdom forward, this is necessary. It's necessary to have that inward focus. There's a lot of other things that pop up in these verses. There's accountability, teaching and uh, counseling with each other, growing in wisdom. There's relationships, helping each other, striving for unity. There's using our giftings and talents. That means we have to be more than just passive. Um, don't settle for a participation trophy at Harmony. Don't do it. Because we, we, we do that sometimes. We're really comfortable with like, I came on Sunday, I checked my box, I showed up for family night, and I did my thing, but that's where it stops. Be here. Be plugged in. Be a part of something. Don't, don't settle for passive. And think about, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great if that's what Harmony really became known for. I I still meet people, and I'm still, some of you still meet people, and you've heard me say it, you've heard Pastor Dennis say it, you've heard Pastor John say it, he's here today, which is awesome, that harmony, when you go out to the community, not everybody loves harmony. Not everybody remembers harmony for what it is now. Not everybody knows where harmony is. I get a lot of, oh, isn't that the school? Like, yeah, but you didn't see the steeple? Like, it's right there. But wouldn't that be awesome if that's what Harmony became known for? That Harmony was the Colossians 3 church that's clothed in love and kindness and peace and mercy? That it's, it's a body that's continually building each other up? 
that's encouraging, that's teaching, that's growing in wisdom, that's exercising their gifts, that's meeting together regularly to worship, that's leading these, uh, these, 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 these things into their family, watching their families grow, and seeing something amazing happen. And so, so many times we just want to sit back and think, well, we have people on staff that we pay to do that. That's fine. You do. But it's not really going to, to blow past that mark unless everybody's bought in and everybody's willing to just stop and look and pause and reflect and go, where am I in this? I love the pursuit of God. Has anybody read that? Tozer? Towser? Tozer. I'm pretty sure it's how you say it, but I'm not going to correct you if, 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 if I'm wrong or if you're wrong. But in the pursuit of God, he has this really awesome quote. And um, in just a minute, uh, when I'm going to call the worship team back up, but this is what Tozer says. Has it ever occurred to you that 100 pianos all tuned to the same fork are automatically tuned to each other? They are of one accord, being tuned not to each other, but to another standard to which each one must individually bow. And then he says this. He says, so 100 worshipers meet together. Each one looking away to Christ are in heart nearer to each other than they could possibly be were they to become unity conscious and turn their eyes away from God and strive for closer friendship. And I'm going to finish the quote, but this is what he's saying. He's not encouraging us to turn our eyes away from God. He's saying sometimes false unity, you can fill in the blank. Similarities, things that we have in common, that becomes our focus and not God. Social causes, that becomes our focus, so we turn away from God. Fighting against social uh, causes turns our eyes away from God and onto something else. Let's focus on where we're different. I, I have my friend of people, you have your friend of people, we yell at each other. That becomes our focus, and he says, that's what pulls us away from God. A hundred worshipers met together, all looking towards Christ. There's probably a hundred people in here, I can't count that fast. But there's a, a, a good crowd this morning. That's us in this quote. Are we striving to keep our eyes on Christ? Or are we looking for something else? And he finishes his quote by saying this. Social religion is perfected when private religion is purified. It will not matter what harmony does or harmony strives to become if as individuals, we refuse to meet that standard and we refuse to go through purification and we refuse to let the Spirit lead. He says the body becomes stronger as its members become healthier. The whole church, the whole church, that's a big seed, the whole church of God gains when the members that compose it begin to seek a better and higher life. So the challenge, that's what, we're, we're, what I want to kind of leave you with this morning. So I'm going to ask the worship team to come up and we're going to do a little exercise with them to kind of maybe drive this home a little further. You, you may have seen this before. There's a lot of new faces. Some of you haven't seen this yet. But think about these words, being in tune uh, to, to a standard, striving for something a little, a, a little higher, something a, a little better, something differently. Now, I, I play guitar. And um, I don't know if you know this about guitars, but guitars, we're going to pretend they're you as individuals, and guitars, they have a, a, a built-in standard. Now, wherever the E string is, you can always tune to the E string. So as, as Ben and Mike are, are tuning, so what that means is the bottom note, the bass note, is the top string. And no matter where that is, you can tune the rest of the guitar to that standard. But here's the problem. That string doesn't have to be in tune to tune the rest of the guitar to it. And you can hear it in the back, you're like, that sounds horrible. It kind of does. But you know what happens when you tune it to the guitar standard and you get it to that place? It becomes sort of serviceable. You might find a key, you might find a range, it might sound okay, It'll sound okay to you. It might sound okay to the people sitting around the campfire, 
But when, when you try to, to play it together, here's kind of what happens. Do you hear it still tuning? Sorry. That's okay. I went faster than you did this time. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, guys. It's dreadful. It is dreadful. All right. Thank you. So here's the point to that, right? So each, each person, they're tuned to a standard. But here's what it is. They're tuned to their standard. Now, the good thing is we have technology, and technology has an absolute standard of what tuning should sound like of where, where an instrument, specifically a guitar, needs to be. So as Mike and Ben start tuning back into tune, they're going to not only be in tune on their, their individual guitar, but you're going to notice they're going to get to the point where they're also in tune with each other. And it sounds painful, and it's not a fun process all the time to go through, because if you know how to tune a guitar, you have to stretch strings and pull strings and, and really get working. So as, as they get closer, I'll slow it down just a touch. <laughs> but I, I think you're understanding what's starting to happen. So now, now their guitars are tuned to a standard, and they're almost in tune with each other. Did you beat them this time? Yeah. You beat them this time, yeah. Sure did. Awesome. New strings. New strings. <laughs> So now their, 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 their instrument, their guitars, are tuned to a standard. And this is what it sounds like when they play together. No, no, you're doing the GCD thing, so you guys are in tune together. Sounds better. Sounds excellent, right? That's what we want to hear. So I'm going to ask them to uh, start to play our closing song this morning as, as we get ready to close. And I want you to just kind of pause and to consider and think about what, what, what these verses in Colossians mean, what it means to be in tune to the right standard, what it means to strive for individual health. And um, I love this song. And are you guys set to play? Yeah, let's hear it. We're almost there. Don't mess up the illustration. I know. It's all right, though. There we go, yeah. Is, is that painful for you guys? Do you hear? There's still some dissonance. So here's, here's what's happening right now. They're both in tune to the right standard. They're both in tune uh, together individually. They're both playing the same song but they're they're not playing in the same key there's still a battle there's still like headbutting are they wrong well not necessarily right we could sing it in whatever dreadful key that was or we could sing it in the really good beautiful key but until we're able to get to that point where we're we're in tune with the right standard we're giving up our desire to say, I'm right, this is where we need to be, and saying, I'm going to tune to the standard, I'm going to seek that higher, better thing, I'm in tune with each other, but we're also going to move to the same page, and we're going to push forward in the direction we're supposed to go. This is what it should sound like. And they're going to actually keep playing, because this is where I'm going to close. This concept that Tozer talks about with a hundred people being in tune to the right thing, a hundred pianos, uh, C.S. Lewis uses a very similar illustration where he talks about ships. He talks about the importance of, of the fleet of ships as they're trying to sail together, they're trying to accomplish their goals, but he also talks about how important it is for each individual ship to maintain personal integrity, to make sure that the inside, that the ship is safe, it's seaworthy, it's able to sail, because if it's not, what happens is they start colliding into each other. So as he, he lays out this example in mere Christianity, think of, think of harmony as a fleet of ships. You're all ships trying to, to sail together to complete harmony's mission. And the reality is the voyage is only successful if the ships don't collide with each other. If they don't 
uh, get in each other's way. If they remain seaworthy, they have to sail together. If it's broken, if it breaks down on the individual level, the ship is damaged on the inside, the gears don't work, or whatever it happens to be, inevitably what's going to happen is they're going to crash into each other, they're going to sink, and everything is going to fall apart. So what we can do is, is we, can, we can warn each other, we can guide each other, we can encourage each other, we can admonish each other, we can do everything that Paul lays out for us in Colossians 3, but the reality is if we can't steer from danger ourselves, it's going to end in disaster. Why? Because as an individual, I'm not safe, I'm not good, I'm not healthy. I can't lead someone into health if that's not what I'm striving for. So as we get ready to close, I want you to take this time just to, to kind of look and to think of yourself, where do I fit individually in this? Is there something that I need to clean up? Is there something that I need to tune up? Maybe, maybe some parts need to be replaced. Maybe some of those characteristics, the love, the peace, maybe you gotta change out the anger and the bitterness for love and mercy. Or maybe there's something that you're holding on to because it's just like, I can't get past this. I can't forgive. And, and these are, are general statements because I don't know on an individual level what you might be struggling with. I don't know what part of your, your ship is broken. I know what parts of mine are. So it's important for us to, to kind of pause and go, what specifically is, is something I'm struggling with? What is something that I can work on? What is something I can change that's going to push me to move towards individual health, that's going to push me to move towards body health? You might think, well, it's not a big deal. It's just something simple. So what I like to gossip every once in a while. That's something. It's not healthy. C.S. Lewis finishes that portion up. He says, what is the good of drawing up on paper rules for social behavior if we know that, in fact, our greed, our cowardice, our ill temper, our self-conceit are going to prevent us from keeping those rules? I'm going to morph that. What good is putting a vision and a mission together? What good is planning a ministry hub in downtown Middletown? What good is planning new outreach opportunities? What good is planning prayer uh, initiatives and discipleship initiatives if our greed and our cowardice and our ill temper and our self-conceit and our lack of humility, our lack of teachability, our anger, our frustrations, can I stop or should I keep going? It's going to prevent us from accomplishing those goals. Harmony you are as you will only be as healthy as you are as individuals the difference is you might think it's just an individual impact but it's a body impact and it's a community impact john chapter 13 verses 34 and 35 john writes so now i'm giving you a new commandment love each other just as i have loved you you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples. Be disciples. And that's where I'm going to close because I can't. You guys take it.
Great. 